All right, I got a lot to say here, and I'm gonna try not to get too in the weeds of the technicality stuff. But basically what I wanna talk about is the DIY guitar kit that I launched earlier. There it is. Uh, <laughs> this year. Um, there was a huge success, and thank you all very much for everybody who participated. And of course, those files are still available for download at newperspectivesmusic.com. And the way I did it was I created 3D models that were compatible with any software, like you could 3D print these files, uh, as well as uh, vector files and PDFs for people that wanted to, you know, build their own versions of this guitar in their own software. But the real value in that kit was I included all of my Vectric Aspire files. Um, so you could just basically open up the files that I use and then cut the guitar with like hardly any effort. The downside to that was that you had to be pretty up to date on this pretty expensive software. So uh, the other question I was getting asked a lot when I released that guitar kit was where's the bass? And I thought I would solve both those problems with one flail swoop right here and we're going to introduce in this video with this new DIY bass guitar um, downloads that are available over at newperspectivemusic.com. And so what I did when I designed this bass is instead of using the very expensive and up-to-date Aspire software that I currently use, um, I went back to the oldest version of VCarve, which is the two-dimensional software, and I created this whole file using just VCarve 9.5. That's like a six-year-old program. So anybody that's bought any VCarve um, or Aspire since version 9.5 is gonna be able to open and cut these files just as they are. How did I do that? Well, I did a whole bunch of CNC nerdy tricks where I did not use any 3D modeling to create this obviously very three-dimensional object. I did all of the neck radiuses, the fingerboard radiuses, the cutaways on the body, all of that I did by tricking the 2D software. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I did in this video to do that. Um, now, if you have Aspire, you can open up and use it. If you have VCarve, you can open up and use it. And if you don't use either of those programs, you could still go and just grab the vector files that are also included and open it up in the software that you use and then create your own uh, instrument using all of those tool pass. And if you watch this video series, it's going to follow. It's going to teach you all the things you need to know to just go ahead and do that. And that's not all. Much like the guitar kit, I also wanted to make this accessible to people who do not use CNC. And so I created MDF templates that you can just purchase these physical router templates to go and make this yourself. In this video series that's going to follow, I'm going to show how I do all of this stuff. Um, actually, you see way back there, that base that's hanging on the wall is one that I made using the router templates on film in this video series. But let's just get started with the basic overview of what's going on here as far as the software goes, and then we'll get into actually starting some of these bodies. Firstly, I am a proud Vectric user and supporter, and I strongly suggest getting yourself up to date and using the newest version of Aspire software. It is so much better, um, but it is expensive. So if you're a hobbyist, that might not make sense, but if you are serious about CNC, get into 3D modeling and get the newest version. Um, but if you're not, and you just want to you know, putz around with the 2D stuff, uh, this is going to get you going. And so basically the trick is to use molding tool paths to create the illusion of three-dimensional cuts. And so you can see what I did here is I created created two half circles on the back of the neck um, that meet in the middle. But of course the neck is tapered, so it does create a little bit of a point that you're going to have to fix by hand. But by creating these two molding tool paths, um, we can create the illusion of, of a half circle. And I messed around with a couple different ways to do it, and that seemed like um, the best way. And so that's like your, your main most important sort of 3D cutting that you need to trick into 2D. Uh, shapes and stuff. Um, and then once we got the neck figured out, I was like, well, now the rest is going to be easy. The body is mostly two-dimensional cuts, just cutting out shapes and holes, but you can see I did that same molding toolpath trick to give us these cutaways for your belly cut and your arm cut and, and give the illusion of uh, this being a full 3D carve. Then for the fingerboard, I created a 12-inch radius by drawing a 24-inch circle and just selecting a piece of it that I used to then do uh, a molding toolpath again, but this one was a little bit more straightforward. I just created one line on the edge of the fingerboard that was outside of it and just rounded over this big giant swath of a 12 inch radius and then cut my fingerboard out from that. Um, we can talk a little bit about router bits and stuff too when we get into actually cutting it, um, but so you might need some specialty ones to do this, but there are some tricks. Like I'm using a very small end mill to cut these fret lines, but you could also just score them with a small V bit and then finish by hand with a saw. So you'll see the download kit includes these vCarve files that will open up in any version of vCarve or Aspire Post 9.5, as well as DXFs. If you have other software that you want to use, you can just open these universal DXFs or PDFs. And then also include like a parts list and some general information that might help you get going. 
You'll need a CNC with a 36 inch cutting length, but it might be width or length depending on your machine. You'll see I created the files both directions to make it easier for you. And um, I also did this with the guitar files. I updated those so the neck uh, would fit in both vertical and horizontal orientations. And also I added to the guitar files a VCarve 9.5 version of those. So now you can make the guitar kit without having to be up to date with Aspire. And that's all available over at my website. Hey, just a quick heads up, this kit is also compatible with um, store-bought Fender style necks like J or P necks. They'll bolt right on and work with this base. So if you wanna make this and you're afraid about making the neck because it is so complicated, um, just go ahead and buy a neck, make the body, and then maybe in the future you can make a neck for it. Okay, let's start by cutting the body on the CNC. I thought I'd have some fun. I had these cutoffs of uh, a leftover butcher block table that weren't quite big enough to cut a guitar out of, so I thought I'd stick them together, and I just cut some slots on my table saw, and then I used my favorite hollow core door uh, plywood strips to sort of uh, seam these two pieces together. They were a little, little bit tight. It took a little bit of work to get it, but uh, you know I wanted it to, to last, and so we did this kind of fun butcher block cross uh, grain thing that I'm going to use to make my first uh, body on the CNC. Now, um, I find the center and line it all up, and the file includes uh, configurations for two pickups or one pickup, and also two different pickup styles. One is a store-bought EMG Active Electronics pickup, which I put in the one that I make by hand, and the other is to use my pickup. Uh, honestly, it's gonna cost you about the same to get the active system as it would to get all the parts and components in my pickup to go with the passive system. Depends upon your personal preference, uh, and if you want to put two pickups in, of course you could. You might have to add some additional holes for controls and whatnot. But you see, all I used to do this whole body was in a quarter-inch uh, ball nose to do the radius cuts, and then a quarter-inch end mill to cut all the pockets and straight cuts. So you saw I did that molding tool path on the back to create the belly cut, and then I cut out my cavity, uh, and now I've flipped it over with my little trick to drill guides into the wasteboard. And maybe we'll talk about that more later, but um, it's a really useful way to make sure you line up your work. Uh, I've talked about it in other videos. And there you see, doing the same molding tool path on the front, I get the front contour and then all my 2D cuts and everything looked good. The CNC can't do this for you, but I also have to drill a hole to run the wire from the pickup to the cavity. And later I'll have to drill a hole for a ground wire to the bridge. And I used some uh, tinted epoxy to fill in some of the mistakes in the wood and the holes and stuff. Okay, we're going to stop there with the CNC body, and now we're going to move on to making the body with the router templates. Uh, that's up next. But before we do that, I just want to remind you that with the six-string guitar kit, I did create a V-Carve version that would work just basically the same way as this. So anybody that wants to buy that kit that is interested, that is not as up-to-date on Aspire, from V-Carve 9.5 and up, both of these files work. Or if you're not a CNC guy, let's jump into the router stuff now. The router templates that are for sale are a little bit different than what I'm using here. These are my first uh, prototypes, and one of the problems I had was the neck pocket uh, was a little bit wide on that first one. That's why I have some tape there. Um, but so you'll see that the top one has a little extra material on it instead of that second horn um, just to help with the router sled, and the back one is the one that actually gives you your shape. And I began by cutting out my shape roughly on the bandsaw, making sure to stay clear of the lines. Using some two-sided tape, I put my template back down, and then I moved over to my router table to trace that template and get my final body shape. Now, there's these uh, router bits called pattern router bits that have bearings on them, and it really helps to have uh, one in both ways, like having a bearing on top and a bearing on the bottom, uh, to get these you know slightly thicker guitar bodies, because you're not really going to get it in one pass with one of these little ones. So you can see here I have the template now on the bottom of my router table to go ahead and get started, and then I can um, flip the the router bearing and, and do it the other way with the template on the top. You need to be very, very careful removing these templates because the, you can break them. They're only quarter inch MDF. And I, and I always suggest to everybody that you don't use the templates that you buy from me. You use those templates to make new templates because uh, things can go wrong easily. And then if uh, you do break the the template that you created, you still have the masters to go back to instead of having to buy a new set for me. But I was able to get this off without a problem, and you probably will too, but better to be safe than sorry. So we had a, we had a little bit of tear out here, uh, partly because I lost control and I let it slip here, and so I made a, a boogery mess of that. And then there's just a chip out there because it's these are spots where the grain 
tends to want to chip when you're riding it like that. And then there's another one right there. It's just, it's just tricky. Um, and so what I could do is I could cut this wood off, grab some of the cutoffs from the frame. Uh, I could cut this whole thing off, glue a new piece on. It's all butcher block. It would look normal. But instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a little epoxy fill and have some fun with it. Um, and I'm kind of glad this happened because I think it'll be interesting to, to see this problem solving in the video. I mean, I mean, I planned all that. Yeah, I planned that. Woodworking is mostly fixing mistakes, right? I like to show off my mistakes when they happen. And uh, I also try not to waste epoxy. So I just taped this whole thing up a lot to use as little epoxy as possible to fill those in. I always like to keep one left-handed guitar and one left-handed bass in stock at my store. And I just sold both my left-handed instruments uh, this week. And so uh, I sold it just as I started this body, which I haven't decided which side is is up yet luckily so i'm gonna make this other one that i'm doing the one i'm doing with my hand uh templates a left-handed instrument uh and that means that i'm going to just like you can see before i sold it i drew out this fingerboard <laughs> right-handed but now i'm just gonna flip it around use this, the back side of the template to make it left-handed and um that'll be kind of cool to make one of these lefty and one of these righty show that these templates are um, versatile, or at least we'll see how versatile they are. <laughs> one of the reasons I'm making one of these using the templates is to see how the templates work. And here's like one thing I'm gonna change, uh, you'll notice if you buy uh, the templates that I'm gonna make this one part of this body um, and then the cover part of the other one because I think it might make a little bit more sense uh, to do this well here what we're gonna find out so what I want to do is I have two holes I want to cut here one is just the depth of my my cover piece and so I need a template to do that but then I also have to cut all the way through or almost all the way through for the control cavity and I need to leave these little tabs so I have a place to screw my my cover on um, yeah I think I think uh, maybe I'll add this one to the thing instead because for now I'm gonna go over the drill press of the forcer bit hog away a bunch of this material that I'll be able to route out later, but I also want to route down uh, just a little bit uh, for my, my cover. So I'll do that now while it's like this, because, well, that's what it's for. But you see I pencil drew roughly uh, where these tabs are going to go, so I can just go and, and hog this out uh, just by eye and get close enough uh, to what I need to do. I overlapped some footage to save some time there, and now the epoxy had dried, so I was able to go back and uh, clean up these edges on the router with that template glued back down again. Uh, and then it was time to lay out the front, and uh, again, I'm doing a lefty, so I had to remember to do it all backwards and um, flip it upside down. And you'll see that the template has two holes for pickups, but I only want to use one, so I just taped over the other so I wouldn't forget and mix up. And I want to cut my neck pocket um, and my pickup pocket for that matter to about 0.66 or 0.67 inches deep and so I set my stop on my drill press so the forcing bit wouldn't go deeper than that I actually set it just a little bit uh, lighter than that so then once I got most of the material out I was able to I'm using that piece of MDF to to set my depth against the template uh, and then I was able to just go in and clean this all up make the bottom look pretty and get all the edges uh, nice and pretty uh, with this pattern router bit so you know Pattern router bits are your friend <laughs> when it comes to guitar making, that's for sure. Unless you have a CNC, then you just let the CNC be the pattern. So I'm a proud CNC user. I have been for many years, and I'm also a convert. When I um, first got into woodworking, I was sort of anti-CNC because I didn't want to spend my time at a computer. Um, and what I thought that, the, that computer would do is take away and... and disconnect me from all the things I really love about woodworking. So here I am back pre-CNC Tim using templates and routers and all this stuff and finding, um, I didn't remember how much of this time was spent just doing really tedious things like just peeling the backs off of two-sided tape and checking and checking and checking again the depths on your CNC router or not your CNC router, your handheld router um, and all this minutia that happens and then also like the errors that happen like with this um, piece of wood that chipped off the headstock on me as my hand router hit it whereas the CNC is better at that than me and more careful and you're less likely to have those types of problems happen so this is kind of a reminder like this is taking me like way longer than I remembered and is a uh, way more tedious than I remembered making me love the CNC even more and another sales pitch uh, for the CNC is um, when I'm cutting things on that 
most of the sawdust is going up the vacuum tube. And now, as I'm doing all this stuff by hand with handheld routers, I have a mess everywhere. And of course, you can hook up dust collection to handheld routers, but what a pain in the neck that is. And my drill press, of course, I got to clean up over there. And I'm not even done yet because now I still have to shape um, this body. I have to do my arm cut and my belly cut, and I'm going to create a ton of chips doing that now. So um, let's make a bigger mess. And man, last time I'm doing it this way. <laughs> Back to my CNC. <laughs> I'm about to create my uh, my arm cut here, and uh, you know normally, of course, I would do this on the CNC, and it is included into the CNC files in a in a molding tool path. Um, but what I'm going to do here is an example of how it looks coming off the CNC. But I'm doing this one by hand; it's probably not going to look quite the same. Um, normally, I would use my Arbortech uh, power carving stuff to carve it away, but I thought uh, today I would um, get a little cardio in and try and do it with a hand plane. I do love using my hand planes. I have some of them are, are very old. They were my grandfather's. And, um, but then I'm reminded again of like, oh yeah, when I'm doing this instead of the CNC, there's like, I got to spend all this time just figuring out, you know, work holding and <laughs> clamping and removing the clamps so I can get where I need to get. Um, but then, you know, once you get going, it's a lot of fun. And I do like getting that, get a little bit of a sweat on. But the belly cut on the back is all on the inside, so I cheated. I use my Arbortech turbo plane to get away and most of the material there and then I went in with some hand rasps and hand sanding to you know make it look perfect. You gotta be careful with that Arbortech thing, it takes away a lot of wood fast. I also added a slight chamfer uh, to both the front and back of the uh, instrument just to make those edges look a little smooth, but you gotta be careful where your belly cuts are to not uh, run into that by accident, you gotta keep your bearing on there. Um, and then I use uh, my neck plates that uh, I make um, to align uh, where I'm going to put my screws and kind of figure that out. And you see I have that one neck plate has that angle to it. Uh, it's like a different style. And I thought I would just go in by hand and cut the heel to fit that angle. But first I want to place them and you want to make sure you, you know, do all that right, of course. Using my drill press, of course, and then I can go and figure out exactly where the plate's going to be and then figure out an appropriate place to cut uh, to get that look. And I just did it right on my belt sander. Took like a minute. Then of course there's the sanding, lots and lots of sanding by hand and with power sanders and I brought the whole thing up to about 320 before I put some linseed oil on it because I like to really bring out the grain and the color a little bit before I finish it. So you want to get that linseed on there and then let it sit for a few days before you put finish over it. Well, depending on what kind of finish you're going to use. Okay, let's stop there. Next week, we'll jump into the next. I think this is a good, pretty good place to end. So I'm putting these videos out public. These are really basically just um, part of the package for people that want to buy these uh, these download files and kits. And, um, you know, it's like a how-to instructional video. But I'm putting them out publicly because, hey, guess what? You don't have to buy my kits to find this stuff useful. You can make your own designs and you can find other people's kits and then still use this video. Like, I'm not going to be upset about that. I'm here to help people make instruments. And, uh, you know, if I... Uh, you can do that without buying my kit. Great. If you want to buy mine to get you kind of started, great. Whatever you want to do. Let's just all have some fun. I'll see you next week where we'll start making the next both on the CNC and the old-fashioned way. And guess what? I make a whole bunch of mistakes. <laughs> all right. See you then.